Hello, this is a case demonstrating the importance of the jumbo sheath, the jumbo whirly sheath, and an Amplatz, a Cook Amplatz support wire. So we start off here with a 63-year-old uh, female who has permanent atrial fibrillation, who is re status post remote mitral valve, mechanical mitral valve replacement, and has a massively uh, enlarged right atrium. Uh, there was no real problem getting a wire into the coronary sinus. Uh, there was difficulty advancing into the coronary sinus, as you can see here, and then once in the coronary sinus, uh, the sheath was very unstable, and despite multiple hours, uh, a lead could not uh, be placed successfully. So we go on now to the second attempt, and uh, we approach this in pretty much the same way all the time. Uh, we start off by locating the CS with the uh, CSG, the Worley CSG with braided core, and you can see this is the braided core uh, portion and the sheath is back here. And then once we get a glide wire into the coronary sinus, we advance the uh, Merritt Medical vertebral shaped vein selector uh, over the glide wire. And so this right here is the vein selector, and you put the vein selector deep, deep into the coronary sinus uh, over the glide wire, remove the glide wire, and then advance in a Cook Amplatz extra stiff wire. Um, and it's very important to use a Cook versus a Boston because of the nature of the distal section of the Amplatz wire. So now once you have the uh, Amplatz wire in and you have the uh, vertebral vein selector, you've created a rail over which you can usually advance uh, the uh, subselector and the braided core uh, and then the sheath. And when you have an unstable situation like this, it's wise then to just leave this, the coronaries or the Amplatz wire, the Cook Amplatz wire, deep in the coronary sinus and then pin it to the drape or the table so that it doesn't slide back. And that Amplatz wire will continue to stabilize the sheath throughout the rest of the procedure. The beauty of having this 9 French Worley sheath is it gives you a nine, enough access, enough internal diameter that you can leave the, the Amplatz wire in place while you're doing the procedure. So we then went on to do a venogram and looking for our target vein anatomy. And as you can see here, we have uh, a larger branch and then a smaller anterolateral branch. And then down below here, uh, we have a posterior lateral branch. And when we get up into this area up here, we're going to want to select the larger of those two branches to try to put the lead in. So we, we use the uh, renal LVI, also re subselector, in conjunction with the standard vein selector and we locate the anterolateral branch up here and advance the wire. And then the question comes up, is, in the, is the wire in the large or small branch? And the real beauty of having a vein selector in the branch is that you can puff a little contrast and determine where you are, and you can see here that we're in the smaller branch. This is probably the branch that the lead was in previously because that's where the wire tended to want to go but it's really too small to get anything more than just the very tip of the pacing lead into there. So because the, um, everything is nice and stable, we can use the vein selector to relocate uh, the wire uh, into the larger branch. You can see now the wires in this larger branch. Um, and then slide the vein selector over the wire deep into the branch and again, this is, it's possible to do this because the sheath is uh, stable and the coronary sign is stabilized by the Amplatz wire. Uh, and then from there, we'll slide the, oh, from there we'll do uh, a local contrast injection. And why are we doing this? Well, let's just say that this doesn't work out up here, the vein's too small, we get, can't get good thresholds, we'd like to know what other options we have. And I mean, remember before, we did see this posterior lateral branch, but we ne really never saw it in its entirety or we were not able to judge its takeoff. 
So by injecting uh, into this lateral branch up here and filling the posterior lateral branch retrograde, we can see what we'd be up against if we needed to try to uh, use this posterior lateral branch as a potential uh, target vein. So now we have uh, two wires down, uh, and that's to stabilize uh, everything so that we can now uh, advance uh, the pacing lead, and we have the pacing lead in place. We have a wonderful QLV uh, of 160 milliseconds, and uh, the patient's QRS narrowed uh, rather dramatically, uh, producing a very satisfactory response, and we anticipate a great clinical response. So again, this, the issues here are using the jumbo sheath, the Amplatz, Cook Amplatz support wire, uh, and then the vein selector to be able to uh, advance the pacing lead uh, into the uh, appropriate branch by a little puff of contrast and then also injecting into your original target branch to make sure that if it doesn't work out, you'll know what other options you have down the road. Thank you very much uh, for your attention.